Hello and welcome to the Lensat 177. And today our guest is Unity Fiji Party Leader, uh, Savanada Nurumbe. Mr. Nurumbe, thank, um, uh, thank you for joining us on the program. We have thank a list of questions uh, uh, for you, but let mm. me start uh, with the idea that you put forward last week. Mm -hmm. uh, that is in regards to challenging the 2013 constitution. Uh, why are you taking this uh, path to challenge the 2013 constitution in the court of law? Yeah, thank you for inviting me to, to this discussion. Mm. The constitution is the fundamental law of any country. And uh, for us, uh, options would be one, to gather the views of the people, amend the constitution. That option is out because the, uh, it is very difficult, virtually impossible mm. to, to amend the constitution. So what is the other option? We in, in Fiji Fiji uh, emphasized during the 2022 campaign that we are going to try to change this constitution. So that's why we are following this option to challenge the constitution in a court of law. Two, uh, two reasons for that. One is that the constitution uh, was not uh, people did not participate, did not participate in developing the constitution. Mm -hmm. Second, it has not been passed in a parliament in Fiji. Mm -hmm. So those two are fundamental issues, let alone what we believe is the constitution's, uh, this present constitution limits some of the progress that we want mm -hmm. to, to implement in Fiji. Mm -hmm. But the fundamental issue is the people. Mm -hmm. People didn't take part and the people did not approve the constitution. So that's why we are taking this, mm -hmm. uh, this, this option. Let me stress a few issues there. Uh, this is for the people. Mm -hmm. Nothing political about it. We've been talking about it. Other parties, including the parties in the coalition now, have talked about it in the past. But nobody has done anything. 12 months, over 12 months down uh, the road for this coalition government and nothing, nothing at all. So that's why we're taking this option. I think it's worth uh, the, the value of the, the costs of doing it. So that's the reasons why we're taking this forward. You are taking this action uh, given uh, your party doesn't have money. How will you fund this court action? very very important resourcing of uh, this initiative but uh, you know how, how did the other parties got rich Fiji first PEP how did they get rich uh, we are not as rich as them but how did they get rich they, they got rich by donations people believed in that party perhaps so we are hoping that people will believe uh, in this initiative support it and through uh, resourcing it, including uh, the financial part. We are praying about it. We think God can guide us uh, in this journey. And uh, we trust that we will get the money that uh, we would need to challenge this imposed constitution in a court of law. Do you want seasoned lawyers in Fiji to come on board pro bono to take this forward? Absolutely. Uh, we have yet to approach them, we have yet to consult them, but that is our hope. That they believe in the cost that we are taking and provide their technical services, uh, hopefully pro bono. Mm -hmm. We will have to get into the details of the legal technical advice that we need, the legal process later, and who should we involve uh, in, in this uh, court challenge. When the late uh, Chandrika Prasad challenged the removal of the, I believe, 1997 right. constitution, lawyers lined up yeah. behind him yeah. pro bono. Yep. Uh, do you, is, is it your wish that Fijian lawyers do the same for, with yeah, this constitution? It is my humble wish yeah. uh, that, uh, yeah, something similar to Chandrika Prasad's mm. case, that we will have that support. Mm. We need somebody to lead it, open it up, uh, plan it, and that's exactly what we're doing. 
Should the Fiji Law Society get involved? I think so. I think so. We may have different views here. Some may not wish to change the constitution. Some may need to uh, do other options around it. But we believe it is the only legal way to change the constitution. Waiting for the requirements of the constitution to change it, amend it, I think we'll wait forever. Mm. The coalition government cabinet has, has decided that uh, they refer a part of the constitution to the Supreme Court for review. If there is a positive outcome and the coalition government wins that, uh, gets a positive opinion from the Supreme Court, that will be a positive move to have the constitution go into court of law for you. Yeah, uh, I'm not a, a legal expert, Anish, mm. but to me that is challenging the interpretation of certain provisions in the Constitution. We are not doing that. Mm. We are challenging fundamental issue of whether that Constitution should be there at all. Uh, and then if, if it's the, the ruling of the court that the, we may, <coughs> excuse me, remove that constitution, then we go forward to find an, an alternative constitution that the people participates in, and it is for the people, and of course to reflect, mm. reflect some of the progress that we would like mm. uh, to, to put into the constitution. One of the fundamental issues is our democracy. We believe that uh, the electoral system now needs to be reviewed. What uh, Fiji first put in the constitution needs to be reviewed. We cannot do that without uh, amending the constitution. So yeah, to me it's the fundamental positions that the countries need for progress to unity, freedom, and all those uh, values that we are fighting for. You said this is not political, but you're a political party, you're a politician. People will still say this is a political mileage for Unity Fiji if it gets going. Yeah, uh, we are myself looking at it from what is the benefit to the nation. Hmm? What is the benefit to the nation? That is the fundamental issue. And I believe the people is at the center of this. The vehicle that we take this forward, Unity Fiji has stepped up and said we will take that. Huh? Nobody is taking it up, this government is not taking it up, so we have put our hands up and said we will take it. Mm. So uh, to me, uh, we can be bipartisan in this, mm. uh, rather than having uh, entrenched political uh, views that will stop anything being done. Mm. Uh, we hope that the other parties can come in and join. We'll talk to government, we'll discuss with government, any stakeholders that are important, we will consult. Mm. You mean to say uh, this decision is entirely yours and not in consultation with anybody else for the time being? For the time being. We promised that in our, in our campaign in 2022 and we are implementing that. Mm. So what's the possible outcome should the court of law say, okay, there is a case, we want to hear it? What will happen then? Of course it will hear it and we'll be glad to get to that point. Yeah. Uh, the interesting issue is uh, the decision by the court. They'll either support us or in favor of our challenge or not. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it's in favor of our challenge, what happens? So that's a bit of planning to be done. What we need to plan is how do we transit from the court decision uh, to the new constitution. And that plan we will need to uh, formulate, develop before we even get to court. So when we get to court, we can reassure the court that there is a plan if you decide in favor of us that will protect the continuity, stability mm. of the governance of Fiji. Mm. That's a very interesting phase of, of this uh, attempt. Given court cases are lengthy, it may take years, it may even last your lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've personally experienced that, uh, that uh, it's a slow uh, process. But we hope because of the national uh, importance of this that we'll ask the court for expedition of this, uh, of this court case. 
in the constitution currently entrenched is provisions for uh, safe no immunity immunity, uh, immunity immunity phrases for uh, security forces who were involved in the coups would you want that removed or will that be in a new constitution if it comes that a new constitution is adopted we are not taking positions on individual provisions uh, if we can leave it to consultation process that uh, is, is a central part of this uh, initiative uh, in this at this point let me thank the commander of uh, the Fiji military forces of uh, his position on the rule of law. We, I really welcome his uh, announcement and the recent uh, reassurance that he will stand by the rule of law. What we are doing now is within the law, within the legal uh, processes, we will follow that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we will have just to uh, discuss this very thoroughly with the people, consult them and ask them for their views. Then we will put those uh, views into mm. our legal mm. process. Mm. Do any local lawyers come to your mind who should join you in this quest? Oh yeah, a few. A few, I won't mention names uh, uh, in this interview, yeah. but uh, I'm sure they know themselves. They are experts into constitutional matters. John Apted. John Apted. And Richard Naidu. Uh, yeah, Richard Naidu. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll go and have a chat with them. Chen Ben Yang. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Narume, we'll take a short break and after the break we will discuss the governance of the country. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back uh, to the program, The Lens at 177, and today we are talking to Unity Fiji leader, Mr. Savinada Narumbe. Mr. Narumbe, let's talk about uh, the current governance of the country under the coalition government. They've, th they've just finished one year, uh, four months, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the indicators or signs that suggest uh, that this country is being governed poorly or correctly, in your opinion? Yeah, definitely not correctly. Uh, and uh, I think we, we have a sense of uh, asking this fundamental question, where are we heading as a country? That's the fundamental questions that are on most of us. Because we, myself particularly, confused about where we are heading, either economically, politically, and so forth. So to me, there has been uh, examples of the lack of credibility, accountability, transparency by this government. Mm. And I can rattle off some of the examples uh, that we have. For instance, the failed reshuffle by the government. Uh, that to me reflected the lack of accountability. Mm. The Prime Minister blamed everybody else except himself. Mm. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good example. Mm. The other is the indecisiveness of the leadership of this coalition government to determine whatever they need to determine on this case of what we are calling the Windsor Gate 233 affair. Okay? Yeah. So they are not doing anything to that. And that to me damages uh, what I believe the credibility of, uh, of, this, uh, of this government. And recently we hear allegations after allegations of, uh, against senior ministers uh, in this government. I stress its allegation. Mm. It needs to be proven. But I, I think if the allegation is credible enough, and some are, I think the Prime Minister, as the head of government, needs to remove those from cabinet to allow a proper investigation to be done. Mm. Has that been done? No. So uh, in addition, uh, to me, this government focuses more on simple, easier things. 
They leave the fundamental issues untouched. As I said, one year, four months down the line. And still, these fundamental issues remain unsolved. No plans that we have seen from, from uh, this government. Uh, we can talk about poverty, we can talk about uh, uh, the inequality of incomes and, and so forth. Mm. They, they don't touch that, including this review of the Constitution that we talked about mm. earlier. The other, we see political cronies still being appointed to decision making. Mm. Huh? Tell me, I agonize over that. Don't we have other people outside the political circle mm. to be able to make decisions for us? And, and we know the possible risk of, of doing that. The cost of living is going on and it's increasing all the time. And uh, there's nothing uh, being done here. So overseas travel by ministers, uh, gosh, it's alarming. Mm. Huh? So those are the things that gives me, and I think a lot of people, a sense that it's the same old, same old things that are being done now. Mm. Huh? It's like the previous government, or perhaps worse in some cases, mm. where we collectively in the opposition at that time were condemning these actions by the previous government. And now coalition has come in, we had high hopes of it, and I think we're all disappointed. Mm with their performance mm. up to date. What you've said now, somebody in government would say, oh, there's just another Narumbe yapping away. Uh, <laughs> that could be the assessment of what you have said. But uh, do you still carry that political weight that somebody should listen to you in government? Uh, let's not talk a lot about the messenger. Please, this is the message. It's not me only that's talking about it. And I think if you choose to shoot the messenger, uh, you may do that. Eh? Uh, he lacks credibility, he lacks this. He, eh? But the issues are there. Talk to the issues, please. Eh? Bring out your alternative views of the issue, not of the messenger. And I think we'll have a better Fiji, mm. a better governance if we do that. Do you think Fijians are holding this government accountable? And if yes, how? Absolutely not. Uh, and this is a fundamental problem that we face in society, in, in the country. We do not make our decision makers uh, to account for what uh, they are doing. Mm. It's a culture, perhaps. We are too silent. Perhaps we don't want to rock the boat. Hmm? Uh, we leave things as they are. But in doing so, when you don't stand up mm. and say something that can change things, you are part of the problem, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So I think it's more a culture, uh, more emotional uh, response rather than a, a kind of objective assessment. Mm. And ultimately, Anish, at the end, we pay a big price for it. Mm. Who pays? Not the politicians who may be lining their pockets because of who they are, but it will be paid by the people. Mm. And that's a heavy price. We are not conscious of that price, but there is a price. Mm. Uh, do you receive complaints from your electorates, people who support you and tell you what's happening on the ground? And have you taken any such complaint on behalf of anybody to somebody in government and have you been heard? Yes, yes, we have made uh, presentations uh, to government. Uh, the, the most recent one was on the National Development Plan. We are happy to work with government, happy to share our views. Mm. Whether they like it, whether they take it abroad, it's their choice. Mm. But uh, for me, I, I, my role is to highlight uh, their views. Yeah, we listen to constituency or members of the public. Some come into the office and place their, uh, their and uh, they let us know of uh, their issues, uh, some through the social media that we pick up. Yeah, but uh, to me, this kind of views, alternative views from what the government position is, I, I urge government to listen to it. Mm. Is the government lacking in its uh, communication uh, portfolio department in reaching out to people to see 
what they need and what they want in terms of policy changes? Yeah, I guess a fundamental uh, issue is you are there at that position for the people. And that needs to be translated down to what they do, what their policies are. Are they listening to the people? Mm. Uh, they may be doing in, in some ways, but I, I don't see that reflected in decision making, addressing the priorities of the needs of the people coming out. No, they're not. Mm. Uh, so they, they need to listen more uh, to the people and serve the people's interests first and foremost before they serve their personal mm. interests. Okay. If they continue on this path, the, the coalition government, mm. what's the risk that they will, a, they will be a one-party government, a one-term government? Uh, yeah. Uh, to me, the, uh, the possibility is high, yeah. but uh, uh, it's uh, one year, four months into the term. They have a bit of, of time that they can work uh, a bit more to address some of the issues that are coming up. But uh, ultimately, in any kind of political setup, either it's a coalition or it's a single party, leadership mm. is the key. We need a leader that is visionary. We need a leader that can practice the accountability, credibility, transparency for any government. We need to look for that leader. Because uh, right up to what we are you now, I think there has been example, as I've quoted before, yeah. that uh, that leadership uh, needs to uh, perhaps uh, kind of uh, put some of the issues in proper priorities and address the needs of the people. Mm. Mr. Narumi, we'll take a short break and continue the discussion on the other side. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the Lens at 177, and today we are talking to the Unity Fiji uh, Party leader, Savanada Narumbe. Mr. Narumbe, uh, uh, the, economic, the economic summit happened. You took part uh, mm -hmm. in that summit. What portion or what part of that summit uh, has this coalition government actioned? If they have actioned it, well, good. And if they have not, they have, and if they have not actioned it, what's your message to them? Uh, I have seen very little action on the things that were discussed in the economic summit. And I'm not surprised. Mm. We have held summit like this in the past. Uh, the, the implementation of it is quite uh, poor. And I'm not surprised that it's the same. Mm. Uh, that uh, views expressed in the summit were quite wide ranging. Uh, and it, it's difficult to put them, pull them together. But I think we need to start doing that mm. and show that uh, the results is, is being implemented. Mm. Uh, the economic side of it, uh, I think there's a lot to be desired uh, in this. They came and uh, the coalition government inherited a lot of problems uh, from the previous government. But what have they done about it? Yeah, I, I think this is the test that we need to put this government. Mm. What have you done and what will you do within the, f the four years of your term? Mm. We have yet to see much happen. Mm. I don't think you have publicly assessed the performance of the Minister for Finance, uh, Professor Biman Prasad. Mm. If I were to ask you to assess him on his performance so far, what would that assessment be like? You know, as a minister, to me, if I was the minister, the first thing I would do is to stand up there and uh, show the direction of where we are heading. Where are we going economically? I haven't seen the Honorable Minister for Finance do that. He hasn't done that. I, this is not the first time I'm raising it on issue, but he hasn't done that. So the people are bewildered. Where is the solution that you promised when you campaigned? Where is the solution to incomes, to poverty? Uh, 
and all the other things that goes with it. Cost of living. We haven't, we haven't seen that. Uh, so, uh, to me, uh, that uh, the, prime, uh, the Honorable Minister for Finance will need to do that. The budget is coming up. Perhaps he will do that in this budget. Mm. What would be your inputs for the 2024-2025 budget? Uh, I know the Minister of Finance is working on it. Uh, if you had to give your two cents, what would that two cents be? Okay, my two cents. Uh, as I said, this government uh, is facing a lot of problems on the physical side. The, the uttermost problem is the debt situation. So whatever they do there, they have to be consistent with moderating the debt position. And to me, uh, don't look too much at income, at revenue, sorry. <coughs> yeah. I am disappointed with the fiscal review committee that dived into revenue, mm -hmm. increased taxes. I don't think that's the solution right now. Hmm? I would urge the Minister for Finance, get deep into the expenses. Go for the expenses because you have a better handle on, on expenses. Look at the wastages that uh, Unity Fiji has been uh, raising all these years. Huh? Look at that uh, and really cut out those unnecessary expenses uh, and then shift priorities within uh, the expenditure expenses to more urgent work that needs to be done. Mm. And we're talking about health, education and so forth. Mm. Those would be my higher level uh, suggestions to the Honorable Minister. Mm. Cutting expenses would mean looking at the one billion dollar uh, one dollar billion, one dollar, sorry, one billion yeah. set aside for salaries alone for civil service. How do you cut that? How do you control the one billion for salaries and wages? Yeah, uh, you, salaries and wages are a big component, perhaps the biggest component of any government expenses. Uh, they need to look at that, uh, not so much in cutting the, uh, the salaries, but look at their manpower needs. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, the, the other is just the public service reforms, productivity mm. of public service, so they produce more for the same pay. Mm. Uh, so I think those will be uh, the, the reasonable ways to, to look at uh, expenses. But there are so many other expenses mm. that the government needs to focus on. One thing, uh, my favorite thing, is the transfers of our taxpayers' money to what we call state-owned enterprises, Fiji Roads Authority and all those things. So, yeah, they need to dive into that in a heavy way mm. and really uh, look at ways of making sure, firstly, that our money is well spent, mm. not wasted, and making sure that uh, they could, these enterprises could perhaps stand more mm. on their own two feet. Mm. If you were to ask to give a submission on the budget, the new budget, uh, would this be your underlying contribution or? Yeah, at the higher level, right. then we need to drill down mm. to much more details mm. into revenue collection, the efficiency of it, and of course individual expenses. How about the size of cabinet and ministers? Oh yeah, <laughs> that uh, to me is a very, very good uh, place to start. Mm. Uh, I believe that uh, all members of parliament are now in, in government, are either ministers or associate ministers. That's a huge cost. Mm. That's a huge cost. They could start there. They could start uh, second their travel. I think uh, the sense I have, there's still a lot of unnecessary uh, travel. Mm. Mr. Narume, let's look at the 2026 general election or 27 early. Uh, Unity Fiji Party, you will still be taking the party to the polls? Uh, we are preparing for the 2026 election. Unity Fiji will be there. Uh, whether I will be heading it, uh, we are still uh, going through that process. Uh, so we, we are preparing mm. for that. Uh, I know it's uh, two and a half years or so uh, before the elections, but uh, you know, time flies mm. very quickly and uh, we are mobilizing our resources uh, preparing our, our team mm. for the 2026.
So if you are not there, uh, what would be the reasons for you not leading the party? Well, I've said, um, I didn't say that I won't be there. Uh, I think in the case uh, that uh, uh, the decision needs to be for the party to continue for me to, to lead it, yes, I think I'll be there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you went alone in the last elections in 2022. Uh, do you intend to do the same or are you looking at a coalition with somebody? We'll have a coalition uh, of many parties. Roughly, and, uh, but weren't we you tried. offered? Weren't you offered in 2020? We tried, 2022. We tried in 2021, 2020 to form this coalition. Uh, we thought that is uh, the most efficient way to defeat Fiji first. Mm. But unfortunately, the other political leaders didn't agree, so we didn't form a coalition before mm. the elections. Yeah, so. We formed it after the election, and you could see some of the challenges mm. that this coalition government faced because of that. Mm. Imagine if we had coalitions before the elections, things would have been much, much smoother and more stable mm. than what we have uh, now. So we'll, we'll still try to get coalition mm. going of, uh, of all the political parties. You know which parties you will want to work with? Let me ask you which party you won't want to work with in 2026. Not Fiji first. Yeah. But if this current coalition government doesn't prove, doesn't deliver, and if it's crunch time, would you join hands with Fiji first? No. To dethrone this coalition government? No. You will never do that? No. On your heart? No. I've seen what they have done. I've seen that. And uh, not only in the economic destruction, but more so in destroying people. Uh, and that part, I think, we need to re-emphasize to, to the people. The fear, intimidation, uh, even physical abuse, that is what they have done to this country. No other political party has done that. Let's not forget that. Hmm? A party that does that to the people, we, in Unity Fiji first, Unity Fiji, in principle, would not join. So it's best to guess that you want PEP, Sodalpa, NFP, yourself, FLP. Whoever is available before the election. To be in government. Yes, in the we, next we could come up and uh, look at the coalition. Mr. Narumbe, thank you very much to, for talking to us. Thank you. And Rish. wish you all the best. Nah.